The Berti Formation, which dates back to the Silurian period, was a shallow, warm water sea that supported a diverse ecosystem. The sea floor was covered in a variety of organisms, including crinoids, brachiopods, and corals, which formed extensive reefs. Sea scorpions were also abundant in the formation, and were likely important predators in the ecosystem. Fish and cephalopods such as nautiloids also thrived in the sea. The presence of trackways and burrows suggests that the sea floor was home to a variety of invertebrates, including worms and arthropods. The shell of Phragmoceras had a smooth surface and a slightly curved cone shape. It had a complex siphuncle, which was a series of internal chambers that allowed it to regulate its buoyancy and move up and down in the water column. Orthoceras had a simple siphuncle, which was a series of internal chambers that allowed it to regulate its buoyancy and move up and down in the water column. Fossils of Orthoceras have been found in marine sediments all over the world. They were likely an important food source for many predators in their ecosystem, including trilobites and primitive fish. Its shell had a smooth surface and a slightly curved cone shape. Serratiochorus had a distinctive appearance, with a long, segmented body and a large, flattened head. It also had large, stalked eyes and a pair of powerful claws for grasping and crushing prey. It likely fed on a variety of small organisms such as crustaceans, mollusks, and worms. Paleophanus was a type of Eurypterid, also known as a sea scorpion, and is one of the earliest known examples of this group. It had a long, segmented body, with a pair of large, grasping claws at the front and multiple pairs of swimming legs towards the rear. It also had a distinctive, spiny tail, which it likely used for defense against predators. The prosoma of Sudaniscus covered by a carapace with recurved posterior margin and pointed genal spines. Most of the dorsal feature on the carapace are not significantly expressed. Limuloids was similar in appearance to modern horseshoe crabs, with a hard exoskeleton and a broad, flattened body with a distinctive horseshoe-shaped head shield. It had multiple pairs of legs, including a pair of large, paddle-like appendages that it likely used for swimming. The calissary of the pterygotids like Eratopterus were clearly adapted to be used for active prey capture and more similar to the claws of some modern crustaceans, with well-developed teeth on the claws, than to the calissary of other Eurypterid groups. Another feature distinguishing the group from other Eurypterid groups were their flattened and expanded telsons, likely used as rudders when swimming. Pterygotus was one of the largest arthropods that ever existed, with some species growing up to 2.5 meters in length. It had a long, narrow body with multiple pairs of legs, including a pair of large, paddle-like appendages that it likely used for swimming. Its head was dominated by a pair of large, compound eyes and a pair of grasping claws. It likely lived in shallow marine environments, such as estuaries and deltas, where it would have hunted for prey in the sandy or muddy sediment. Pterygotus was a powerful predator, feeding on a variety of small fish, crustaceans, and other invertebrates. It likely used its grasping claws to catch and hold on to its prey, then used its sharp, serrated jaws to crush and consume it. Acuteramus had a long, slender body with multiple pairs of legs and a pair of large, paddle-like appendages that it likely used for swimming. Eurypterus was a relatively large Eurypterid, with some species growing up to 60 centimeters in length. It had a long, segmented body with multiple pairs of legs and large, paddle-like appendages that it used for swimming. It likely lived in a variety of shallow marine environments, such as estuaries, deltas, and coral reefs. 
Eurypterus was a carnivorous predator that fed on a variety of small fish, crustaceans, and other invertebrates. Dolichopterus likely lived in freshwater environments, where it would have hunted smaller fish and other aquatic organisms. It is thought to have been an apex predator in its ecosystem, with few natural predators of its own. Buffalopterus is closely related to Strobilopterus, but differs primarily by having a bizarre, globular telson, and in size, being estimated to be at least 1 meter in length. Carcinosoma lived in shallow marine environments and likely fed on small fish, other invertebrates, and possibly even plants. It had a long, segmented body and a pair of large pincers, or keely, at the front of its body. It likely used these pincers to catch prey and defend itself from predators. The body was divided into three distinct regions, the head, thorax, and pygidium. The marine ecosystem of the Cleveland Shale was dominated by several types of organisms, including brachiopods, bryozoans, crinoids, corals, and mollusks, which are all examples of invertebrates. These organisms formed complex communities and built reefs that provided shelter and food for a wide range of other organisms, including fish and other vertebrates. One of the most significant features of the ecosystem was the presence of numerous species of placoderm fishes, which were a type of armored fish that dominated the seas during the Devonian period. These fishes ranged in size from small, bottom-dwelling species to larger, predatory forms that were the apex predators. The body of Oridus was similar in shape to that of modern sharks, with a streamlined body and a caudal fin for propulsion. They could reach up to 2 meters in length, making them one of the larger eugeniodontid species. Their eyes were relatively large, indicating that they likely had good vision, which would have been important for hunting and avoiding predators. Cladus Lake had a number of features that were characteristic of sharks, including a cartilaginous skeleton, 5 to 7 gill slits on each side of its head, and a complex set of sensory organs that included a lateral line system for detecting vibrations in the water. Its body was also covered in dermal denticles, which were small, tooth-like structures that provided protection and reduced drag in the water. It was an important early shark that played a significant role in the evolution of modern sharks. 
Tenacanthus was a predator that likely fed on a variety of small fish and invertebrates. Its teeth were sharp and pointed, with a curved shape that allowed it to grab and hold on to its prey. It is believed that it lived in shallow marine environments, such as nearshore reefs and estuaries, and may have also been able to tolerate brackish water. Stethacanthus was a relatively small shark, usually growing to around 50 centimeters in length. It likely fed on a variety of small fish and invertebrates and may have lived in shallow marine environments such as estuaries and coastal reefs. Its most distinctive feature was a large, flat dorsal fin on its back that was covered in small, sharp denticles. This fin was more pronounced in males, which had a unique anvil-shaped structure on the top of their heads that is thought to have been used in courtship or territorial displays. Phoebotus had a long, streamlined body with a pointed snout and large eyes, indicating that it was a fast-swimming predator. It grew up to about 1.5 meters in length and had a long, slender tail that helped it to swim efficiently. It had a cartilaginous skeleton and 5 to 7 gill slits on each side of its head. Bungartius had a heavily armored body with a flattened, disc-like shape. It had a broad head with large eyes and a wide mouth, which was likely used to catch and eat small fish and invertebrates. It likely lived in freshwater or brackish environments, such as rivers, lakes, or coastal estuaries. Gorgonichthys had a heavily armored body and a flattened, disc-like shape. Its head was broad and triangular, with a large mouth and sharp teeth that were likely used to catch and eat small fish and invertebrates. Its body was covered in bony plates called dermal armor, which provided protection from predators and other threats. One of the most distinctive features of Cacastius was its unique method of breathing. It had a specialized internal gill structure that allowed it to pump water over its gills, rather than relying on passive diffusion. This adaptation likely gave Cacastius an advantage in low oxygen environments. The most distinctive features of Haldinius was its unique dentition. Its upper and lower jaws had multiple rows of large, blade-like teeth that were probably used to slice and shear prey. This adaptation suggests that it was a specialized predator that fed on hard-shelled invertebrates, such as crustaceans and mollusks. With a bite that could split a shark in two and an armored mug only a mother could love, Dunkleistus was one of Earth's earliest apex predators, terrorizing subtropical seas 360 million years ago. It belonged to an ancient faction of fish known as the Ann because the bulk of Dunkleistus's body was most likely composed of fragile cartilage, only the thick armor plates that encased its head and neck were preserved as fossils. However, recent studies depicted another reconstitution of this huge fish, making him shorter and chunkier. This full-figured fish was like an armored Pac-Man. It had a mouth twice as large as a great white's and probably outweighed longer sharks. Unlike other placoderms, Titanicthes did not have jaws and instead had a specialized filtering mechanism in its large mouth that allowed it to strain plankton from the water. Paleontologists have found several well-preserved fossils that have provided valuable information about its anatomy and behavior. It likely lived in open ocean environments and used its massive size to avoid predators and feed on abundant plankton. Despite its large size, it was likely a relatively passive animal that relied on its armor for defense. Tegiolepis had a unique feeding mechanism. It possessed a pair of protruding jaws, called nathal plates, which it could use to scrape algae and small invertebrates off rocks. Its fossils have been found in freshwater and marine environments, suggesting that it was a versatile species that could adapt to different environments. <laughs>